All right, uh, another one of these lights I brought for the wheelchair fire truck project. Uh, this is the second of the three things I ordered. It was back ordered, it finally came in. Uh, you saw the square ones, which were the, this is what I'm gonna go with. This is the first thing I got and it was kind of my preferred thing uh, and it's gonna work out, so that'll be the choice. This was another one I got to try out. Uh, I did a video on that. Uh, nice, but I'm gonna go with the other ones. And then uh, this one, although I've, you know, I've already decided I'm not gonna use it, uh, that was worth doing a video on because it was kind of interesting. It's different from the other ones. So as you can see, it's solar warning light. Um, it, uh, it looks like this, hopefully. Actually, not quite like this. This has got a little uh, like ring at the bottom. The one I have, this is supposed to be this one that, that uh, like has a screw clamp that tightens over a post or something. Um, well, if we can open it up and find out here. Yep, all right, so this is what I expected it to be. Oh, although the uh, switch is out here. I, I could have sworn on the website that the switch was here. Um, yeah, I'm almost certain that it was under, you know, which is, it's more convenient to have it here, but uh, maybe not so good waterproof-wise. Anyway, so this is a, a solar warning light that's, that's meant for like traffic purposes, I guess. Um, in the US, mostly they're uh, amber. Lights that are used that are that are disc shaped, you know, they're like this, about this big around. Um, in the old days, they were they were just a uh, um, you know incandescent bulb that blinked once very occasionally, very dimly. They ran off of non rechargeable batteries. The newer ones are kind of ugly. They have like a, a like circular but with a flat part at the top for a solar panel. Um, and I guess they have, I assume they have LEDs by now. Um, so yeah, we don't generally use red. I guess red is more of a, maybe that's what they use in China. Um, but uh, yeah. Oh, and then, then even older days uh, in the US, uh, I still remember these occasionally when I was a kid, they had these, uh, what do they call them? Uh, smudge pots, I think they were called. I, they looked all the, like for all the world, like a cartoon bomb, uh, like like the, a spy versus spy bomb, like this big black round ball with sort of a little cylinder coming out the top and then the flame on it. Like it was, like the fuse was going and it was ready to explode. Uh, and they got rid of those for some reason. They looked like bombs and they had open fire. Yeah, for some reason they got rid of those. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, that was what they used to use. Uh, and I guess they burned like, you know, like fuel oil or kerosene or something very slowly. But uh, anyway, now we live in the area of LEDs. So this, I'm assuming, is basically like the, the garden, common solar garden lights. Um, except that instead of being black with a clear lens, it's, it's yellow and, you know, it's more caution -y colors and uh, red and I assume it, it blinks uh, there's the solar panel on top I mean the, the style of the construction looks a lot like the uh, solar lights solar garden lights and then this uh, like squeeze clamp thing to uh, uh, fit over a post I guess and they seem to have a variety of styles here um, so I'm guessing for example these ones with the uh, the, the, the skinnier piece and the like the hole is like a loop with a hole in it might be used in like a traffic cone or a, a pylon, I guess you call it in Europe, um, like fit down the top of that and maybe the, uh, the little hole with the, uh, I don't know if you can see that very well, it's, it's yellow and yellow, but there's like a little uh, ring here. You could tie a weight to that and it would kind of help hold it down in the, in the traffic cone. Um, and then these ones they have like three screws on the bottom. Oh yeah, here they are shown on top of traffic cones. Um, yeah, so the, you put these on traffic barriers basically. Uh, and they would charge up during the day and then light up at night, uh, blink and warn people off. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and try it. Let's see, it is off. Yeah, it's off. So I guess it's dark enough in here that... Yeah, so it's just barely in the edge there. <laughs> dark enough. Bright enough to charge. Um, yeah. So it's not super bright, which is one of the things I'd hoped for for my project. I didn't want something that was super bright. Uh, and again, like uh, like this light, I figured it would be a simulation of the older style of round strobes. Uh, I could put one on each side. You know, if you have two lights, if you know, if they'd worked out, I would have gotten a second one. Um, although, as long as it takes to come to uh, to arrive, I guess it wouldn't have. Well, I only need it by October, so it wouldn't have been that big of a deal. But anyway. Um, 
yeah, so I, it's it's kind of nice and interesting. Um, let's open it up and have a look. It's, um, looks like it unscrews, yep. Yeah, maybe not super waterproof. Oh, there's not a lot of slack there. Okay, so three LEDs just kind of bent outward. One battery, which looks like a, it wouldn't be lithium. It's probably a nickel metal hydride. I hope it wouldn't be NICAD because the, the memory effect seems like it would be bad for uh, something that's charging and discharging every day. But uh, I guess they're really, it's not. Is it labeled? I don't see any label, and I'm not sure there's really any way to tell because the voltage is, it should be about 1.2 volts either way. So I can't tell. There's the uh, solar panel and a switch which goes to one side there. I, well, I guess that means it can't, uh, yeah, so you're just disconnecting the negative, or well, I don't know if it's the negative or the positive. You're disconnecting one side of the battery when, uh, when the switch is cut, which also means it wouldn't be charging. So it has to be on to charge. Hmm. Uh, this looks like, this cap looks like it's just glued on. I guess they make one side of a clear cap. I mean, you'd want clear for the solar panel, but then uh, it looks like it's available in, in multiple colors. Actually, it looks like there's quite a combination of lights that you could get. Uh, Banggood only has this one specific model, but uh, yeah, it looks like there's five styles of, of light, four possible colors, and different amount, numbers of LEDs you can order. Interesting. Um, yep. Yeah. So. Let's uh, take that. It doesn't look like it's going to be very much in that circuit board, but uh, uh, you can unwind it a bit to get more more slack. Oh, where did my screwdriver go? Hold on one minute. Okay, got my screwdriver. It's just held on by one screw here. It's rather long standoff. So what do we have? One little chip and a resistor. Oh, a couple of, actually there's more little resistors there, I guess. Let me get my uh, light here and see if I can tell anything about this chip. Okay, so yeah, this, uh, this ship doesn't say anything on it, really. Um, so it's anonymous, very small, eight-pin surface mount. Uh, I'm guessing this is a specialized chip for uh, that's intended for this kind of application. Um, although it is blinking, they are blinking together. Um, so it's not like they're using a regular garden light controller and then blinking LEDs because they wouldn't be blinking, in, you know, in sync. Um, so I don't know if there is a blinking capability that's built into the standard chip or if this is another chip that's made um, for the for this particular application, maybe a variant of the regular garden light controller. But uh, uh, I mean, this is presumably this is something that they make thousands and thousands and thousands of for construction purposes. So I, it would be worth making a custom chip if the uh, if the regular garden light controller wasn't suitable. So yeah, lot, not a lot to see there. Um, it's not super waterproof. Looks like there's not a, a great glue job here, but probably adequate. Uh, I'd be more worried about this. You know, there's no no uh, no great seal here. Water would probably wick up through that, uh, and then pool at the bottom of this. It wouldn't damage the circuit board until it. But there's no like drain hole or anything in there, so you know a decent amount of water could collect before there was a problem. But it is just going to collect; it's not going to uh, drain out. And then also this switch here, you know, I expect water would kind of run down the side and then through capillary action wick up through the switch and get into here. It would be really interesting to try this out, um, to put this outside for an extended test, since I don't have a use for it. I mean, it would be. Um, and it was, I think it was like 750 or something, including shipping and uh, tracking and insurance and all that. But uh, you know, so I wouldn't mind using it for that purpose. Although, 
it seems like it might worry people if there was a blinking red light out they would think there was some kind of emergency or you know i don't know i wouldn't want to cause a problem that way i suppose i could stick it out in the in the middle of the woods out back um yeah i may give that a go um or actually i suppose i could leave it turned off and just see how the water how it deals with the water um it wouldn't have to be on for that test anyway i'll, I'll think about that so yeah a uh a solar blinking red light. Um, I'm trying to think if there are any other applications for this. I suppose it could also be useful as a, uh, um, you know, like a, you could carry this in your vehicle and set it down if you had a, a breakdown or something, although it's really not ideal for that. It's not super sturdy. Uh, and, you know, if it was in your car, it wouldn't be charging up if you were keeping it in a bag or something. So it's probably better to get something made for that purpose, but. I do kind of like it. It's it's interesting, and well, I'm always I've always been interested by blinking lights, I suppose, and whatnot. Um, oh, I guess the other thing I should do is measure this and see what kind of a post it was meant to go over. So two inches. So that's uh, what uh, five centimeters or so. So I'm gonna tighten down bolt. Oh, one nice thing on this. There's a little bit of a if you can see that there's a tiny little dab of hot glue or silicone or something on the end of this bolt so the nut won't come off just a nice little touch there um, but yeah interesting okay in case you were worried that i just stuffed everything back in there i did actually go ahead and uh, reassemble it properly and i thought i'd just take a brief moment and uh, describe how these operate in case you're not familiar with the the typical solar garden light um, because that is just fundamentally what this is it's just a Kind of a respin of it, um, just with blinking red LEDs instead of continuously on white LED. Um, so the uh, the key bit to it is that the solar cell is used for two purposes. It's uh, used both for charging when there's adequate light. Yes, yes. When there's adequate light, it's used for uh, charging the the solar or the uh, the battery. And when the light level falls, then it turns on and blinks or goes on solid for red light. So that's all there is to it. Um, it is just just basically the identical design except for the uh, the packaging is different. Um, so uh, electrically not very interesting, but uh, I, I, I find this just more interesting overall. Just, I, I love this kind of industrial looking uh, kind of thing. Um, warning lights and construction lights and that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, so when I was a kid, I always wanted one of those lights that go on the uh, the construction saw horses um, and now I've, I guess I've sort of got one but the Chinese version of it so anyway uh, yeah I'm, I'm glad I got this although I'm not gonna use it for this project I think it's pretty cool and uh, I'm happy to have it so if you enjoy this video please like comment and subscribe it helps other people find this video too thank you